My wildest dreams as an All Blacks supporter have come true. For 20 plus years, the All Blacks have dominated their brothers across the Tasman. And we regularly beat Australia by thumping margins. But lately, that dream has become a nightmare. And it kind of reminds me of that episode of The Twilight Zone. You know the one where a deceased man arrives in the afterlife and he thinks he's in heaven. There's a casino and every time he plays the slots it pays out. He cannot stop winning. He is surrounded by beautiful women. The champagne never stops flowing and there are no hangovers. Well, after a few months of that, the guy becomes depressed. There are no surprises left. He's sick of winning. The climax of the episode reveals that this guy isn't in heaven at all. He's in hell. Now, I'm not arrogant enough to say that that's where the All Blacks are this year, that it's a fait accompli, we're going to beat Australia. I don't think that's the case at all. I never sleep on Australia. I think they're a wounded animal, and they scare me right now. Because the truth is, despite the well-documented problems with Australian rugby, they've never had an issue putting together a backline that can cut anybody to shreds. Yeah, their set piece has been a problem for the past decade, but there's still enough talent coming through the Australian ranks to beat anybody on their day. It's just getting fewer and farther in between. So do I think they could beat the All Blacks this year? I think anything's possible. But the All Blacks are a wounded beast too. And coming off the two losses to South Africa in South Africa, I think they're going to want to atone big time. So why am I saying that my childhood dream of total trans-Tasman domination has turned into a nightmare? Well, here's why. Just like the character from that Twilight Zone episode, you gotta be careful what you wish for. It's not that we're tired of winning, far from it. It's honestly been as sweet every single year that we retain the Bledisloe Cup. But the issue is sameness. It's not just that we play the Wallabies every year, it's that we play their super rugby teams every year, multiple times. We're not getting put under the blowtorch that we used to get put under by South African super rugby teams, who played a very different style, a more physical style, a more direct style, a more set-piece oriented style. And because we're not exposed to that anymore, but we are regularly beating the Australian teams who are suffering from a diluted talent pool, the All Blacks are being hamstrung in their development. It turns out that comfortably beating the Australian sides in Super Rugby every year isn't the best breeding ground for an All Blacks team. And we've seen that in recent years. Since that draw against the Lions in 2017, the All Blacks have been in some kind of decline. I believe there are signs now of a resurgence. Making the Rugby World Cup final was incredible and it shows we have the players to beat anybody on their day. But the All Blacks are not just trying to be a nuisance team who can upset top tier sides. They're trying to be number one. That's the All Blacks way. And I believe that they can get there as this new generation beds in and Razor Robertson implements his vision. You know, reflecting on the two losses to South Africa, I've realized the problem isn't the players or the coaching staff. In fact, controversial opinion, I didn't even necessarily think that Ian Foster was the problem in the last few years of All Black decline. I think the real problem was the loss of South Africa and Super Rugby. By only being exposed to New Zealand and Pacific Island teams, as well as Australia, whose style we are very familiar with right now, the potential All Black players in our pool are not getting stressed enough and exposed to different styles of play. I think that's why South Africa has overtaken us in recent years. Their players going to the European club competitions has actually bolstered the team. Now, I'm not a guy that just wants to talk about the problems. There's no point in that. I want to look at solutions, and I think there are some. In fact, the best news I've heard all year as an All Blacks fan came in the last week with this rumored biannual series against South Africa. What that means is New Zealand will go over to the Republic, play the Springboks three times, but also play their provincial teams. That's exciting. Because this is a way that we can expose our younger New Zealand players to the South African style in some pretty hostile environments. That's going to help our boys develop a lot. I would like to be doing it every year in Super Rugby, but I'll tell you what, doing it every other year is almost as good. Do I think we should change the eligibility rules? Man, yeah, it would be a quick fix. I think if you could have put Shannon Frizzell and Richie Mawanga out there on the weekend against South Africa, we might have got the win. But then again, maybe not. If we do any kind of international eligibility change, I think it has to be for players who are 40 caps plus. Otherwise, there will be a deluge of talent. They'll be going north where they're going to get paid a lot more and frankly, play a very high standard of rugby. There's even a risk having a kind of ghetto law equivalent where a player who's got 40 or 50 caps can hop back into the All Blacks. Would that just see guys like Adi Savia, Jordi Barrett, Rico Ioani go offshore permanently? It's not necessarily a good proposition. No, I think we should stick with our regular eligibility rules for right now. But something has to change in Super Rugby. And with Australia losing a team this year as we say goodbye to the Melbourne Rebels, I think the prime opportunity to help Australian and New Zealand players develop is bringing back 
the Haguares. Yes, Argentina on their day are at least the fourth best team in the world. If you don't believe me, look at that second half against Australia on the weekend. That was first degree murder via backline play. It was the biggest score Australia has ever conceded. And frankly, it was the most frightening display of running rugby I have seen from Argentina in my lifetime. It was spectacular. To beat a tier one team by 40 points, what? Congratulations to Argentina. They are the big movers in world rugby over the past 10 years, no doubt. And this is a vindication of their inclusion in the rugby championship. Now, for the first five years, the Springboks, the Wallabies, and the All Blacks were pretty much putting beatings on them. But, much as it pains me as a diehard All Blacks fan, it's a good thing, objectively, that they've beaten the All Blacks a few times now. This is what world rugby wanted. But if we've lost South Africa in Super Rugby, I would love an Argentina team running around and we've got a space for them now. Maybe there is some way to work out a deal in the years ahead. Because while they're not quite like South Africa, at least they offer a different kind of challenge and stress for our young New Zealand players. I think that having an Argentine team, even if it is basically the Pumas wearing different uniforms, would be a great thing for our development. And if they're beating us in Super Rugby because they're basically a test strength provincial side, so be it. So much the better for the All Blacks. So there is hope. I think we took a body blow when South Africa left Super Rugby, but there's time to fix it. So back to Australia. Can they win back the Bledisloe Cup? Yeah, they really can. Because, you know, Australia's like the villain at the end of a horror movie. Just when you think they're dead, there's that final jump scare and they come back to life. Never, ever in my life will I underestimate the Wallabies. Because the day I get comfortable and complacent, I just know it's gonna be the day they win back the Bledisloe Cup. On form, New Zealand are better right now, but I'm not sleeping on these Wallabies, especially with Joe Schmidt as their coach. All right, guys, I'm gonna break down the upcoming Bledisloe series in the weeks ahead, but I just wanted to give you a little think piece today about how the decline of Australian rugby has actually been a bad thing for the All Blacks, ultimately, why I'd like to see the Wallabies doing better in the future, and why I also think we need some new blood in Super Rugby. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll catch you for another video real soon. Take it easy, guys. Bye for now.